Are we predestined or do we have free will? What I've said the answer to both questions is yes. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas. Welcome back everyone. This week I want to respond to a question one of you asked me recently. It's actually a question every Presbyterian minister has been asked countless times. Are we predestined or do we have free will? New ministers know the textbook answer to this question, but it takes a little time and seasoning to hear the question beneath the question and to respond appropriately. And the question I think is something like, is my salvation out of my hands or do I have some say in the matter? Am I no more than a puppet on a string? One of the things that I believe is endemic to human life is the need to establish individual agency, individual autonomy. We want to believe, no, we need to believe that we are in charge of our lives and of our destinies. You can see this already at work in the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden as they asserted their wills in eating the fruit of the tree that they were forbidden to eat. And you can see it even in today's headlines. People act to assert themselves even when it becomes destructive or violent. I almost feel like our culture is undergoing a great big temper tantrum as if to say, you can't make me fill in the blank. Just about anyone or anything who denies people the ability to do as they please is going to be the object of furious blowback. So the idea of predestination appears to many to be an infringement on their free will, their agency, their choice. But what if there were another way to look at it? And what if it weren't a matter of predestination versus free will, but predestination and free will? That's what I want to suggest in this brief series of devotionals this week. Let's start at the beginning, though. We Presbyterians are closely associated with the concept of predestination. Fair enough, it is an important part of our belief system, even if many actual Presbyterians don't buy into it. But the idea of predestination didn't start with us, and we're officially not the only Christian denomination to adopt the, the, the doctrine. John Calvin was far from the first person to articulate it. That honor goes to a man we call St. Augustine, a bishop in the North African city of Hippo in the late 4th and early 5th centuries. And of course, he based the idea on the writings of Paul, who wrote in the 8th chapter of Romans, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those, the, those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? What Paul hints at here, and St. Augustine fully understood, is that predestination is above all else a pastoral doctrine, meant to offer comfort and assurance to the faithful and to keep them from obsessive worry about their ultimate fate. The story is longer and more complex than I can do justice to here, but the thumbnail sketch is this. In the early church, there were those who believed firmly that our salvation is up to us. We choose whether to believe, and thus we choose whether we will be saved. But more than believing, it was also about doing. To be saved in this scheme of things requires stringent adherence to a moral code. The primary figure in the early church who espoused this view was a man named Pelagius. To say that Pelagius and Augustine did not agree would be a vast understatement. Pelagius believed that human beings have the power to choose salvation by their right belief and their right action. From Augustine's perspective, there were two problems with this. First of all, it denied God God's ultimate sovereignty over human affairs. And second, 
It inevitably resulted in a life of severe austerity and even anxiety, as people would worry excessively about whether, in fact, they had done enough to earn salvation. You can see why, for Augustine, predestination was a pastoral doctrine, aimed in part to relieve the anxiety that comes with wondering whether we've been good enough to merit salvation. Augustine, following Paul's theology, understood clearly that salvation is by grace alone. No works on our part earn us entrance into heaven. That is Paul's theology at its very core. But wait, doesn't that imply that we have no agency, no free will? Let's, turn, let's return to that question tomorrow. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.